All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. I want to give double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to all the Lord's hopeful elect scattered abroad, teaching his word in sincerity and truth. Shalom. All right, this is Psalms chapter 58 and 1. To the chief magician, Ostacheth, Mystem of David, do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are extrained from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And we know who this is talking about, you know, which is these Edomites. You know, this fits the description because Esau is the, the the wicked, the sons of the wicked. You know, it says, do ye speak righteous righteousness, O congregation? Do Esau speak righteousness when he speaks? Do President Trump speak righteousness when he speaks? Do the politicians and the patricians and publicans, do, do they speak righteousness when they speak? I think not. Okay. So it says, this is David. He said, do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Because what is righteousness? Righteousness is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right. Righteousness is these scriptures. Do, do America hold the laws of the Bible at its highest standard? I think not. This is why so much wickedness is going on today. And this is 2020 now. Today is what? January the 2nd. So-called 2020, I should say, because how can a new year start in the middle of a, a season? You know, this is January, the time where we get a lot of snow, you know, this is still winter. <laughs> so how can it really be a new year? But anyway, besides the point, you know, besides that, you know, America doesn't hold the Bible at, at its highest standard. When it comes to the laws of the Lord. All right. But they use the Bible to get their way. You know, they use the Bible to set a foundation here in this land in which you call America. All right. So it says, do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Because these are the heathens. David is talking to the heathens. Okay. Esau is a heathen as well. You know, as a matter of fact, the scriptures say in Obadiah, he's the lowest among the heathen. But Esau is also in the class of his own because you got three set. You got three classifications of men. You got the sons of the living power, which are the Israelites. You have the sons of men, which are the heathens. And you also have the sons of the wicked, which is Esau, Edom. OK, now verse two. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Yea. Uh, uh, ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. It's not Esau weighing his violence in, in, uh, with his hands in the earth, going from country, setting up his policy, his democracy, you know, auto app KO, problem reacts to solution. He causes a problem, the people react, and then he comes with a solution, you see, to take over, to control. And that's to his heart. His heart represents the mind. So it says, yea, in heart ye work wickedness. So when they have their think tanks and they're sitting there thinking on how they can change the world or manipulate, you know, the world, it's all in wickedness. Well, I should say control the world because they're manipulating, you know, they're, they're uh, bringing confusion. You know, it's all, it's all for control. It's all to keep people sleep, keep people on the bottom while these elites stay on top. And that's how they rule their kingdom in wickedness. You know, now it says the wicked are extrained, extrained from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. Now, I, I kind of started going into it. Wait, did I? Oh, no, no. OK, OK. We good. We good. We good. Now it says the wicked are extrained from the womb. Now, someone asked me, what did that word extreme mean? So this kind of like what drew me into this lesson. And um, I started looking things up. So the word extreme or extrained. 
Okay, okay, here we go. The word is strain, all right? Which means to be strange, be a stranger. Now, isn't it strange that Esau is, uh, that his blood show forth through his skin? Isn't it strange that that he's the only one on the planet that that uh that doesn't have the melanin in which he's supposed to have to protect himself to protect his skin from the sun to to um to to receive vitamin D isn't it strange the way that they act isn't it strange the way that they talk isn't it strange the way that they um they carry themselves this is why homosexuality is being uh Ramp is being pushed in public, you know, and going rampant, you know, throughout the world. This is, you know, the wickedness that Esau does. This is why all nations hate you, Edomites, because you are strange. Okay, you are strange. It says to become strained, strange, another stranger, foreigner, an enemy. You're an enemy to every nation. That's not a coincidence. It's because it was the way you were born, the way that the Heavenly Father created these Edomites. This is why everybody hates you. And if anyone say that they don't, they're lying because they don't want to suffer the, the poison. Because I want to get into that. They don't want to suffer the poison in which you were put, put upon them. You know, other nations which calling your allies, you know, they only suffer with you because they, they want to receive resources. You know, they want to have protection, but better be known when that when you leave behind your back, they hate you. And that's why the scriptures say also in Obadiah that his own ally shall turn on him. You know, and and, and I saw the elder, uh, Elder Manatazak, he put up a lesson this morning. I didn't get the chance to fully watch, but he said the stage is set because Donald Trump done sent troops out there to go to Iran. And that's prophecy for them to go into Iran. You know, fulfilling the scripture, what's that, Joel 2 and 20, I think, Salakia, which says the ill stink shall come up, you know? So, hey, World War Three is knocking, still knocking at the door. Everything is is in order, brothers. Everything is in orders. It's, excuse me. Everything is in order. So it says, um, let's see. Strange woman prostitute, haul it. To be a strange, to be a stranger, be one alienated. Exactly. Esau is alienated. He's strange. He's different, you know, but he now he made he made his strangeness. See, this this is this is the thing. He's deceiving you because he has now made his strangeness behavior as a norm. So now people go, oh, you know, you got black women. I'm going to say so-called black women, Hispanic women walking around here with blonde hair, red hair, purple hair, green hair. All right. You got men. Working that which is unseemly, man. Burned in their own lust, one toward, one toward each other. And the same thing as the women. The natural use of a man, they have came. <laughs> the, it's, it's, it's not funny. I'm just, you know, you know, sometimes. But the shit is sickening, man. It's sickening. You know, they have made their strangeness a norm. You know? so they, So the world today, especially here in Babylon the Great, which is known as America, everyone has accepted his strange behavior, you know, and made it a part of their custom and way of life. The same thing they done in Rome, the same thing back when they was the, when they was uh, ruling and calling themselves the Greeks. All right. It's no different. <clears throat> OK, let's see here. I guess yeah, that's 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 the point on that. That's the point. All right. So it says, verse three, the wicked are extreme from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. And that's what Esau is very great at. He's two things he's great at. Okay. Speaking lies and 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 uh, and, and and using a sword. Okay. Using his violence, his killing, you know, because his lies that it goes exactly with according to his tactics. Auto ab KO. Here it is, he creates a problem when there is no problem. Then people react because there's a problem. And then all of a sudden he has a solution. He's the one, the forerunner of talking about why oh, we need to do this. We're going to do that. You're going to stop being like this. Like, 
it would, there was never no problem, just like today here in, here in America, okay, here in Babylon. There is no terrorist going on. The terrorist is him. He is the real terrorist. He's staging all these attacks. And people don't want to see it. Well, some people just don't give a two shits about, you know, and they go with the flow. They go with whatever society is pushing. Oh, they got, oh, they said that on social media. Oh, they said that on mainstream media. Oh, wow. Damn, yo, we got to watch out. When there is no boogeyman, the boogeyman is him. He's the boogeyman. And that's why scriptures say in Job, you're going to meet the king of terror because the real terrorist and terror is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And soon, real soon, you're going to meet him, Esau. You're going to meet him. Okay? Because um, I see a lot of videos and I can see in the spirit that 2020 is 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 going to be more of an attack toward Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and blasphemy. It's like they're one of, they spitting in the Lord's face. They provoking the Lord, you know, waiting to see what he going to do, you know. And that's by adding in there also persecuting the prophets, you know, all these great, uh, excuse me, these these stars, these celebrities with these ideologies, these wicked philosophies. And, you know, Cleflo Dollar must make mention. I saw a video where he said that if God um, don't, he said, if God destroy it he said if god don't destroy america because he knows that this place is filthy and wicked he said if god don't destroy america he has to apologize to sodom and gomorrah because he understands that america is just like sodom and gomorrah that's why he said that then he goes to say he said but if god do destroy america he has to apologize to jesus and why because he's pushing that doctrine and make it you know to these people these you you, you so-called christians out there that Jesus blessed America. Jesus did not bless America. So he's saying basically that the most high is uh, has come against his own son, his own begotten son, which he which he is well pleased of. So he have to apologize to Jesus because he's saying that Jesus blessed America. Jesus and the most high, well, who they ignorantly call Jesus because his name is Yahweh Shai. He did not bless America. Matter of fact, Amos 9 and 8 said his eyes are upon the sinful kingdom. So his eyes are upon this place to destroy this place, man. This is Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great, man. So it's a lot of blasphemy and a lot of um, an attack on, on, on the Lord, man. It's to force the Lord's hands to make the Lord see what he's going to do. That's why you go into Wisdom of Solomon. He said, uh, it says, uh, uh, uh. They, they they boast they boast and say that the father is their the the most high is their father you know let's now shame him with a let's let's see if it be true let's shame him with a grievous death roughly paraphrasing because they want to they want to see what the lord is going to do if, if if he if he is of the lord then the lord will save him you know <laughs> these devils are, are are strange man they're sick and evil so it says the wicked are extreme from the womb they go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. And that's right. You know, there was a video that went out a couple of months ago or early this year or last year. So like you for the time I forgot. But anyway, um, there was a little girl where, you know, she was lying. She got in trouble and she lied. And if I don't know where she said a black man did it or a black person took the cookies or something, you know, so it just proves, you know, it just proves it. All right. It says, their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the death adder that stop of the air. Now, another thing, I went into this poison, right? And nothing too deep. Poison. It says their poison, right? Their heat, their rage, okay? Hot displeasure, indignation, anger, wrath, poison bottles, all right? Heat, fever, venom, poison, burning anger. Esau's burning anger, you see? That poison represents their burning anger, their wickedness. It says they're poison, and that's how Esau gets you, all right? You know, you try to start building um, some wealth toward yourself, he going to kill you, man. It says their poison is like the poison of a serpent because when, he, when his anger, when he bites you, you don't just die. You die slow and grievous, man, you know? It says they are like the death added at stop of the air. Stopping the air to what? From hearing the truth, for believing in the truth, for knowing the truth. All right. You Edomites got a lot to pay, man. 
You got a lot to pay. The evilness and wickedness that you have done in this earth, the most high is going to make. Oh, man, yo, the Lord is going to destroy you, man. He's going to shame you, man. You know, and that's why you got certain Edomites that have come out and they apologize. They they all upset because they know what their, their nation have done. But guess what? That ain't cutting it because prophecy has to be fulfilled. You reap what you sow. That's the God knows truth, man. You can be mad. You can hate all you want. But you know how life works. It says their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stopped the air, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. All right. They don't hear the, the charmers, the wisdom. They, they, they don't hear someone speaking up rightly. They don't care. Like they don't they're not charming to, to know wisely manner. Yeah, they hear you. But no, they want to see what else they can get out of you. You know, you know, they like the grape gatherers that uh won't leave no grapes behind. You know, they'll suck you dry. You know, until you're dead, man. It says, verse 6, break their teeth, O Yahweh. You see? This is why I see why you a lot of, a lot of you so-called Christians in the churches, y'all don't touch on David. You don't touch on none of his Psalms. All you touch is on Psalms 23. Lord is my pastor and all that stuff. But you never touch on the story. You never touch on scriptures that King David speaks about. Um, um, he speaks to the Most High and how, and, and, and how he would love for the Lord to destroy his enemies. All right. It says, break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Meaning destroy them, man. Make them weak. Break their army down. Take their sword away from them. This is the Lord going to do. Okay. Let, let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces, meaning let them be taken in a device that they have imagined. All right. When Esau go to shoot his arrows in this day, when he go to shoot his nuclear missiles, which which are called ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, let his arrows fall upon his own land. All right. And I believe that's probably what's going to happen, man. Yeah. Other nations going to get hit. With certain nuclear uh, uh, missiles and things of that nature. But this place, ultimately, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, is going to be destroyed by the way of thermonuclear missiles and the lasers of the chariots, man. That fire, man. You know? Because when this thing pop off, this thing is, is, is hey, Most High is going to have all types of uh, 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 marvelous works happening, man, right before your eyes. You know? I wouldn't be surprised the Lord have a missile come out of the silos here in the land of America, Babylon, and it turns around and falls right back down on the land. I wouldn't be surprised, man. It says, let them melt away as waters which run continu continually when he bendeth his bow, shoot, when he bendeth, excuse me, he, which, look, when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be cut in pieces. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away. Like the untimely birth of a woman that they may not see the sun. So, man, you talk about you talk about uh, hate. You know, King David hated these other nations. He hated you, you know, and he told the Lord that and the Lord was with him for that. Remember, the Lord said that King David is the apple of my eye. They was in the same mind. OK, and that proves also Isaiah 40 and 15 when the Lord said the other nations are as nothing. Most high don't care about you other nations, vocab. He keeps talk, trying to add yourself and build with us. You can't build with us. No matter how long you keep knocking and trying to destroy down the building, the spiritual temple that's being built, which is starting with the word, the doctrine, okay, the gospel that's being set forth through the four corners, you cannot get in and you cannot build and help us, man. You know, there's no salvation to you other nations. You can get mad. You can, you can hate. You can say whatever you want to say. You can do whatever you want to do. You're not getting saved by the Lord. All right. This is your kingdom. This is why the scriptures say, blessed if he that readeth. Go read the scriptures and learn of the nations. Learn who the God of Israel is for. And this Bible talks about the God of Israel has always been the God of Israel. He never said he was going to um, he was going to um, uh, save Edomites, Moabites, Hamites, Ishmaelites. He never said he was going to he was going to save them. He said his people. 
Who did he send the Lord down here for? His people. It wasn't a man that came as a nation because obviously if you use common sense, everybody is born to a nation, to, to, to a, a particular people. How the fuck can one person, excuse my French, but you think a so-called black man is going to come down here, the Lord's creator, creator so-called black man, and he be the son of the most high, and he going to die for, for his people and y'all, the other nations? Are you kidding me? That don't even make sense. That don't even make sense, man. The Lord was an American. All right? This don't even make sense. Uh, 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 let's say if a East, let's say, let's, let's, let's just say if a man that was born East Indian, you know, he gonna die for everybody in the world. It don't even make sense. He will be for his people, the, the East Indians, if that was the case. Same thing, Ham, shit, Esau, <laughs> if it was Esau. Esau don't give a f about nobody in the world besides himself. He don't even care about his own people. You know, this is common sense, man. Use it, man, while you can, because obviously it's 2020 and you ain't allowed to. It's going to be a crime to use common sense, man. Anyway, it says, um, as a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away. Like the untimely birth of a woman, meaning, meaning David saying, man, let, 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 let your life be a miscarriage. Let, let it be a mistake, you know. A woman having a, a baby, the next thing you know, she's having a miscarriage, you know, let you die while you uh, uh, in, in, in the stomach, man, in the womb. It says that they may not see the sun, you know, because it's a beautiful thing to see the sun. It's supposed to be a beautiful thing when you're born, but obviously it's the complete opposite. You know, it's a curse when you're born, as it's written in Deuteronomy. It's a curse when you come in, curse when you go out. But back in the ancient times, when a man would have a a, 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 a child being born, he would he would marry. He would rejoice. They had weddings, man. You know, they would rejoice for 10 days, 15 days, two weeks, 14 days, whatever the case is, man. You know. And he, he would he would be praising the Lord, but not today, you know. So, yeah, let you not see the sun. You know, it says before your pots can fill the thorns. He shall take a, take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Whew. So that a man shall say, verily, there is a reward for the righteous. Verily, he is a God that judgeth the earth, which is Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So there is. A righteous thing. The Lord said he's um, He's going to recompense tribulation to those that trouble you. Recompense means to pay back. So you Edomites, you're going to get paid back in the fashion that you have done unto us. You didn't have to treat us like that. You didn't have to hang us after slavery and things like that. You did it because you hated it. You hated Jacob. And you don't even know why you hate Jacob. Because you don't even know the Bible. You hate Jacob because it goes back to your forefather Esau that wanted to slay Jacob for, for basically supplanting you of the birthright, which is the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's where the hate comes from. If you wanted to know, just read Jacob and Esau, Genesis, the 25th chapter. Maybe you maybe the Lord will open your mind up to see why you hate Jake so much. Jake didn't do nothing to you. but he supplanted you, <laughs> but it was written anyway of the most high. All right. That was going to happen. The birthright, when you read about that and you see that the prophecy was set to, uh, you know, he foretold it to Rebecca, you know, which is Jacob's and Esau's mother. He said, the elder shall serve the younger. So when you understand that, then you understand and go, oh, so it was going to happen regardless whether it happened that way or it happened another way. That Esau, in the end, is going to actually serve Jacob. And remember, Esau and Jacob became what? Two nations. When he told Rebekah, two nations in my womb, two nations in thy womb, you know, shall separate two different manner of people. Okay. Now you got Jake out here looking like degenerates and stupid and, you know, thirsty for money and want to go along and get along and act like a damn strange, estranged Edomite from the womb, man. You know, and that's their poison, man. Esau's poison runs deep. 
You know, he don't actually got to physically kill you. He can kill you spiritually. He can kill you mentally, man, to where you kill yourself. So therefore, he won't take the blame of killing you. He'll say you killed yourself, you know. But anyway, you know, that's all I got. Uh, Lord willing, I hope this lesson was edifying. You know, kind of just jumped into it. I looked up a couple of words and I read this and I was like, okay, let's do something on it. You know, for my first lesson of the day. So I hope this lesson was edifying once again to the whole for elect, because that's what this truth is about. The elect. If you didn't know, now you know. All right. Only the elect is going to be delivered. The elect of Israel, the Israelites. And guess what? You know, you're going to have Israelites that don't look like your regular, uh, typical Israelite, which is a so-called black man, Hispanic, Native and Seminole Indian. They may look like the other nations. Okay. You got something called the speckled bird, okay? Confusion of face, <laughs> all right? You got Israelites that look like Edomites. You got Israelites that look like Moabites from the seed of their father down the line through their spirit. They're Israelites. And if they believe, they, even those will be delivered, man. <laughs> you see how you can't calculate Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah? You can't be before the master. You can't because the way that he designed it, it's impossible, for you to outthink or outdo the Heavenly Father and His Son. It's impossible. Okay? Everything is possible through Him. But it's impossible for you as a man, a creature of the terrain, the earth, to be before the Maker. Okay? <laughs>